हेलो एवरीवन वन सेकेंड लेट अस स्टार्ट द लास्ट सेशन फॉर आरटीबी डिस्कशन फॉर मे 2023 थाउजेंड फॉर सीए फाइनल फाइनेंस फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग पेपर ऑलरेडी आई हैव प्रोवाइडेड यू टू पार्ट ऑफ आरटीबी डिस्कशन इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑलरेडी आई हैव कवर्ड फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन नंबर वन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर क्वेश्चन नंबर वन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स एंड द सेकेंड पार्ट आई ऑलरेडी प्रोवाइडेड फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन सो बिफोर लिसनिंग दिस वीडियो I will suggest you to listen the first and second part of RTP discussion. Then you come to the third part, which is this for what RTP. So in this, we'll discuss the balance question of RTP that is from question number fifteen to question number twenty. Okay, can we start now? Let us start with the question fifteen. Everyone, what is given? In 2003-2004, after the entries 31st March 2003, annual financial statement were approved for issue. A latent defect in composition of new product manufactured by the entity was discovered. As a result of the latent defect, the entity incurred rupees one lakh in unanticipated cost for fulfilling its warranty obligation in respect of sales made before 31st March 2003. Means because of this defect, the warranty provision need to be increased by rupees one lakh for the previous financial year because the this warranty provision relate to the sales made during previous financial year correct an additional 20000 was incurred to rectify the latent defect in the product sold during 2003 2004 before the defect was detected and the production process rectified so 20000 need to be incurred as an expense for the current financial year only rupees 5000 of which relate to item of inventory At 31st March 2003, but out of 20,000 rupees, 5,000 relate to inventory which were available on 31st March 2003, which was which was the closing stock of last year. The defective inventory was reported at cost rupees 15,000 in the financial statement of 23, when its selling price less cost to complete and sale was estimated at rupees 18,000. Means the last year, what was the cost price? Cost price was 15,000. And NRV was eighteen thousand, and therefore it was valued at fifteen thousand. But can I say to rectify the defect, we need to incur an additional cost of five thousand. It means now NRV will become eighteen thousand minus fifteen five thousand, that is thirteen thousand. It means now the inventory should be written down by rupees two thousand. Correct? Yes, sir. The accounting estimate made in preparing the 31st March 2003 financial statement were appropriately made using all reliable information that the entity could reasonably be expected to have been obtained and taken into account in the preparation and presentation of those financial statement. Analyze the above situation in accordance with India Aid. Now, what they want to ask in the question that as per India Aid, whether it will be an error, it is not an error. Can you say if it is an error, we need to make a retrospective restatement in the financial statement in the in the comparative figures of current year financial statement? And if it is not an error, so can you say it will be considered as only a changes in accounting estimate for which accounting will be done on a prospective basis? Means entire additional expenses will be recognized as an expense of the current financial year. So what is given in the question that? The accounting estimate for the previous financial financial year, the accounting estimate made in preparing the financial statement of previous year, we are appropriately what is given. Just check it. This para we are appropriately made using all reliable information that entity could reasonably be expected to have been obtained and taken into account the preparation and presentation of those financial statement. Now, what India Aid says that that error arises. from failure to use or misuse of the information which were available when financial statement were approved and which could have been which could have been obtained with which could have been obtained and taken into account with reasonable effort so in this question you can see this latent defect was found when was found after the financial statement was approved Means this information were not available when financial statement were approved, and this information could have not been obtained and taken into account with reasonable effort when financial statement was approved. Therefore, can I say this will not be considered as an error? 
therefore retrospective restatement is not required therefore in this question we need to increase the warranty provision we need to increase the warranty provision by rupees 1 lakh and we need to also increase uh, means we need to also increase the expenses due to write down of the of the inventory by rupees 2000 but this will be recognized as an expense in the currency only so of course can i say in this question there was under there was some understatement of warranty provision and there was overstatement of inventory valuation for last year but can i say this will not be considered as an error and this will be accounted as an expense in the current financial year only as a changes in accounting estimate as a changes in accounting estimate i hope you have understood correct answer is clear got it can we go to the next question can to the come to the next question next question is based on indias 109 what question number 16 says let us read in a arms length transaction ntd x buys 10000 convertible preference shares in company z for cash payment of rupees 40000 with 25000 payable immediately and 15000 payable in 2 year the market rate of annual interest rate for two year loan to the entity would be 6% explain the accounting treatment for the said transaction so can i say in this case we need to find out a fair value of the investment means this is nothing but for entity x it is investment in convertible preference means it is a financial asset so financial asset as per indias 109 will be initially recognized as fair value can i say fair value is nothing but present value of whatever amount you have paid at a current market rate of interest so we can find out a fair value so can we find out a fair value yes sir we can find out so it is 25000 correct plus then we have paid 15000 payable in 2 years so 15000 into what at the rate of 6% we need to find out the present value so it will be 1.06 divide equal to equal to so it is 0.88 Nine nine. This is the present value factor. It will be fifteen thousand into point eight eight nine nine is equal to thirteen thousand three four eight plus what twenty five thousand you will do. It is coming what thirty eight thousand three forty eight. This become the fair value. This is the fair value. Means initial recognition we've done at fair value. so this financial asset will be initially recognized at 38348 or you can say approximately 38350 and the difference between whatever future payment you are doing means difference between the total payment and this fair value will be considered as what will be considered as what correct interest expense over the two year recognized by applying what 6% what will be the interest interest will be 40000 minus 38 348 350 you can say approximately so it is nothing but 40000 minus 38 350 is equal to what 1650 so 1650 will be recognized as an expense as an interest expense means what jana entry you will do if i'll give the jana entry so for question number 16 what jana entry you will do so on year 1 means when you are purchasing the financial asset You do financial asset account debit. How much? Thirty-eight thousand three fifty. To bank, how much you have paid? You have paid twenty-five thousand. Two. Can you see we recognize the financial liability? Financial liability will be thirty-eight thousand two fifty. Sorry, thirty-eight thousand. Three fifty minus twenty five thousand is equal to what thirteen thousand three fifty. Correct. Understood. Then of course year end one we recognize the interest expense account debit to financial liability. So it is thirteen thousand three fifty into six percent. That will come eight zero one eight zero one. Or you can say eight hundred. then year end 2 one second will pass jana entry interest expense account debit to financial liability correct into 6% once again it is coming 
एट फोर्टी नाइन तो यू कैन सी द टोटल इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस विल बी एट फोर्टी नाइन प्लस एट जीरो वन दैट इज वन सिक्स फाइव जीरो विच विल बी रिकोगनाइज एज एन इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस ओवर द टू ईयर एंड देन वेन द लाइबिलिटी इज पेड एट द एंड ऑफ सेकेंड ईयर दैट विल फाइनेंस द लाइबिलिटी अकाउंट डेबिट टू बैंक अंडरस्टूड सिंपल दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो यू हैव अंडरस्टूड यस सर करेक्ट Now can we come to the next question? Let us come to next question. Next question is what? Question seventeen based on one second India S one zero nine and India S twenty four. Good question, I will say. Good question. This question relate to finance guarantee. But previously, whatever question they have given for finance guarantee, it was in the books of the issuer of the guarantee. But in this question, they have asked question in the books of the entity who have. For whom the guarantee has been given, correct? Now, so there is some changes in the question. Good question, I will say. For the first time, they have asked this type of question. SEL has applied for a term loan from a bank for a business purpose. As per the loan agreement, the loan required a personal guarantee of one of the directors of SEL to be executed. So, guarantee is given by director. In case of default by SEL, the directors will require to compensate for the loss that bank incurred. Mr. Pio Jai, one of the directors, has given guarantee to the bank person to which the loan was sanctioned to SEL. SEL does not pay premium or fees to its director for providing this financial guarantee. Whether SEL is required to account for the financial guarantee received from its director, will there be any disclosure under India S twenty four? Correct. Now let us come to first India S twenty four. So of course, can I say that it is a related party transaction? Because related party transaction are those transaction which is nothing but transfer of resource or any services or any obligation to related party. So of course this will meet the definition of related related party transaction. So as per India's 24 disclosures are required. What disclosures are required? Nature of transaction, what the amount of outstanding balance because of that transaction, provision for doubtful debt related to that transaction, whatever expenses which has been charged to PL. For bad and doubtful debt need to be disclosed. Correct now. These are the information disclosed as per India S twenty four. But what is the accounting treatment need to be given as per India S one zero nine that we need to understand. So can you suppose this guarantee whatever has been given by director will meet the definition of financial guarantee? So financial guarantee is a contract in which the entity who has given guarantee need to make a specified payment. Uh, to reimburse the holder of the guarantee, to reimburse the bank for the loss which has been made by the specified debtor when he when he failed to when he failed to pay the amount. So of course, it will meet the definition of financial guarantee. I hope you have understood. Now, can I say in this question, SEL is the entity who has received guarantee, and the Pure joy is the person who has given guarantee. But India's one zero nine says that financial guarantee will be recognized as a financial liability in the in the books of the entity who has given guarantee. But can I say in this case they have asked question based on SEL, and because SEL is a relate SEL and pure joy this director is a related party. Therefore, no no fees has been paid. Means SEL does not. It is given SEL does not pay premium fee to director for providing the financial guarantee. So no fee and premium has been paid. Therefore, no jana entry in the books of SEL. Can I say SEL will only recognize the loan as a liability. So they will not pass any jana entry for financial guarantee received. They will not pass any jana entry for financial guarantee received. Ha! If suppose they are unrelated party, then of course SEL will pay some premium and that premium whatever has been paid for the guarantee received. Correct now will be recognized as an expense, but in this question no fee, no premium has been paid. I hope you have understood. Correct now. So this is very simple question. I, I hope you have understood. Let's see what the answer has been given. Question seventeen. You can see they have first given the meaning of financial guarantee. Financial guarantee what they have given is a contract that require the issuer, that require the issuer to make a specified payment, to make. Specified payment, correct? To reimburse the holder for a loss it incurred because specified debtor fails to make the payment, correct? 
तो बेस्ड ऑन अ डेफिनेशन ऑफ कोर्स इट विल मीट दैट डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल गारंटी करेक्ट अंडरस्टूड कैन रीड इट वट एयर रिटर्न इन एन आर्म्स लेट ट्रांजेक्शन बिटवीन अनरिलेटेड पार्टी द बेनिफिशियरी ऑफ फाइनेंशियल गारंटी वुड रिकोगनाइज द गारंटी फॉर गारंटी फी और प्रीमियम पेड एस एन एक्सपेंस बट इन द गिवन केस एस सी एल इज द बेनिफिशियरी ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल गारंटी एंड डज नॉट पे प्रीमियम ऑफ फी टू इज डायरेक्टर फॉर प्राइवेटिंग फाइनेंशियल गारंटी अकॉर्डिंगली एस सी एल विल नॉट रिक्वायर टू अकाउंट फॉर सच फाइनेंशियल गारंटी इन द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट करेक्ट नॉट दे विल नॉट पास इन जॉन एंट्री इन द गिवन केस ऑन द लिमिटेड फैक्ट प्रोवाइड एस सी एल विल रिक्वायर टू मेक नेसेज डिस्कलोजर एज पर इंडिया ट्वेंटी फोर फॉर फाइनेंशियल गारंटी रिसीव they need to disclose the amount of transaction amount on each of transaction the amount of outstanding balance the provision for doubtful debt the expense recognized during the period in respect of bad and doubtful debt due to you from related party understood these are the disclosure required simple got it understood now can you come to the next question yes sir come to the next question next question is based on india's 38 as well as india's 103 what they have given an entity acquired two trade secrets secret recipe in a business combination recipe a is patented and recipe b is not legally protected correct how the acquisition of recipe a and recipe b would be accounted for by the entity as per relevant indias so this recipe a and recipe b has been acquired in business combination now what indias 103 says that any intangible asset which has been acquired in business combination will recognize if it meet the definition of intangible asset now as per indias 38 intangible asset are those asset which are identifiable non monetary item without physical substance now we need to understand whether it meet the definition of intangible asset or not now for meeting the definition of intangible asset it must be identifiable now what india is 38 says that any asset will be identifiable if it is separable it is if it is separable separable means it can be sold separately or it can be exchanged licensed or it can be given rent separately means it is capable of being sold capable of being transferred capable of being exchanged etc so it becomes separable or if it arises from legal or contractual right then also it will meet the definition of identifiable even though it is non transferable even though it cannot be separated so if it arises from any legal or contractual right then also it will be identifiable even though they are not transferable correct so if any one condition satisfied it will be identifiable and if it is identifiable it is intangible asset correct so in this case just try to understand cp a is the what patented so patented means can it it arises from legal or contractual right so cp a will meet the definition of intangible asset because it meet the it because it meet the legal or contractual criteria understood now coming to cp b the doubt will come for cp b because it is given the question that cp b is not legally protected so can i say the legal or contractual criteria will not be applied means cannot be satisfied for recipe b but even though it does not arises from legal or contractual right can i say it will be that it will be separable because it can be it can be cap, it is capable of being sold separately exchanged separately licensed set separately so even though it is not arising from any legal or contractual right but it will be identifiable because it is separable so if it is separable it will meet the definition of intangible asset so in this case both recipe a and recipe b can be recognized as an intangible asset correct now in the books of account in whenever business combination arises understood have you understood good question simple question understood yes sir now let us come to the next question next question is question number 19 based on india's 34 means previously there was no such question in icsi study material so i used to say that this concept is important but once they have given similar question in rtp now they have given the same question in rtp therefore this concept now become important from examination point of view however we have done the 
this similar question in class but i used to say it will become expected only once the questions comes in exam uh, questions comes in rtp okay what they have given let's see the entities financial year end on 31st march what are the reporting period for which the financial statement contains or complete in the interim financial report of the entities as on 30th september 2001 are required to be presented if entity publish interim financial report quarterly or entity publish interim financial report half yearly understood so if entity is prepare, preparing quarterly interim financial report then what will be the how what will be the financial statement what will be the financial statement presented that we need to inform and if entity publish interim financial report on half yearly basis so what will be the financial statement to be presented that we need to inform correct now means just try to understand the when i am saying quarterly the quarterly means what this is the previous year so 1 2 3 and this is what 38 september so this is our current interim period this will be current year and we have a come we need to also give some comparative figure so this become current interim period comparative figure understood now so we need to present for this so we need to present balance sheet as on means this is current year this is previous year okay so as on as on 38 september 2001 and as on 31st march 31st march 2000 means as on this date comparative figure will be as on this date now sopl so we need to prepare four sopl one is three month end date 38 september 2001 one is six month end date 38 september 2001 and we need to give comparative information also that will be three month end date 38 september 2000 and six month end date six month end date 38 september 2000 have you understood this point bolo then we need to prepare also statement of cash flow so statement of cash flow we need to give two statement of cash flow correct so that will be what it will be 6 month and date 38 september 2001 and 6 month and date 38 september 2000 comparative figure and for so case statement of changes in equity same we need to prepare 6 month and date 38 september 2001 and 6 month end date 38 september 2000 means if you write down this much they will give you marks correct now but if it is half yearly you can see when i am saying half yearly so half yearly this is 6 month 38 september correct now so in this case can you see the current year as well as year to date will be same only because year to date this is 6 month and current year financial statement will be also current year interim financial statement will be also 6 month so in this case i will say balance sheet will be what same but for sopl we'll have 6 month only 6 month only statement of cash flow will have 6 month 6 month and so ke will have 6 month 6 month i hope you have understood this information need to be given so for half yearly it is understood for quarterly you have understood you can refer the solution and you can understand how to write down the answer got it got it yes sir now let us come to the last question of rtp the last question is based on indias 105 can we take this question yes sir we can take question 20 same question has been given in ic study material correct now so this is not a new question i will say discussion is not required for this question but let us because i have discussed all the question let us take this question also on 1st jan 2001 the carrying amount of the relevant asset of division of an entity star limited were as follow purchase goodwill 1.2 lakh property plan and equipment average remaining estimated useful life is 2 year is 4 lakh and inventory 2 lakh total become how much this 4 plus 2 plus 1.2 this 7.2 so can i say this question to of course under it is a disposal group disposal group the carrying amount is given 7.2 
From first Jan 2001, Star Limited began to actively market a division and has received a number of serious inquiries. On first Jan 2001, the directors estimated that they would receive 6.4 lakh from the sale of division. Since first Jan 2001, the market condition have improved, and on 30 April 2001, Star Limited received and accepted a firm offer. to purchase the division for rupees 6.6 lakh the sale is expected to be completed on 30 june 2001 so on 1st jan 2001 came this is the date this is the date of classification of disposal group as held for sale so it means we need to measure the disposal group at lower of carrying amount and fair value less cost of disposal it is given fair value less cost of disposal how much 6.4 lakh so 7.2 minus 6.4 is equal to what 0.8 Yeah, this 0.8 will be first allocated to goodwill, and balance loss will be allocated to other assets which are within the scope of India S 105 in the ratio of their carrying amount. So can you say it will be entirely allocated to what goodwill? So after this allocation, what is the carrying amount of goodwill? The carrying amount of goodwill will be 1.2 minus 0.8. That is what 0.4 PP will remain same. Because entire impairment loss was allocated goodwill only, it will remain four lakh, and inventory it will be two lakh. Understood? But can I say once it is classified as held for sale, now there will be no amortization, there will be no depreciation for PP and what goodwill? Goodwill will never be amortized, but there will be no amortization. There is no what depreciation for ten for property, plant, and equipment and intangible asset. Okay. Rupees six. Next, what they have given. The sale is expected to be completed on 30 June 2001. Rupees 6.6 lakh can be assumed to be reasonable estimate of the fair value division on 31st March 2001. On 31st March 2001. So next reporting date it become what 6.6, 6.6, correct? During the period from 1st Jan 2001 to 31st March 2001, inventories of division costing rupees 1.6 lakh were sold for rupees 2.54 lakh. At 31st March 2001, the total cost of inventory of division is now 1.8 lakh. So can you say now the inventory will become what 1.8? Means the total become what 0.4 plus 4 plus 1.8. That is 6.2, 6.2. And now the fair value is given how much 6.6? So there is an increase. There is an increase by how much 0.4? Correct. So there is an increase by 0.4. I hope you are understanding. But can I say once the goodwill will be impaired, the reversal of impairment loss of goodwill is not permitted. Is not permitted. So can I say even though the fair, even though the fair value less cost to disposal subsequently has been increased, but this will not result in the reversal of impairment loss of goodwill, and therefore no accounting treatment. Therefore no accounting treatment. All of these inventory, ठीक है, okay. Explain disclosure requirement related to sale of division. And provide the accounting treatment of PP for sale and discontinued operation. So just try to understand. One thing is clear that this is this entire information they have given as a relevant asset of a division of an entity. So, okay, for a division of an entity, so if this division is considered as a component of entity which is classified as held for sale, correct? Now, so it will meet the definition of discontinued operation. So, if it will meet the definition of discontinued operation, so any profit or loss of such discontinued operation need to be disclosed separately. Need to be disclosed separately as per the requirement of India S one zero five. Understood? Let's see what the answer has been given. Let's see. Cross check. So, question twenty. The decision to offer division for sale on first Jan two thousand one means that from that date the division is classified as held for sale. The division available for immediate sale is being actively marketed at a reasonable price. Means you can give me give the reason why it is classified as held for sale. The consequences of this classification is that asset or division will be measured at lower of carrying amount and fair value. So it, this implies that asset or division will be measured at 6.40. The reduction in carrying amount of asset of 0.80 lakh. Will be treated as an impairment loss and allocated to goodwill only, leaving carrying amount of goodwill as 0.40. The increased expectation of selling price of 0.20, 6.60, and 6.40. 0.60.
एंड सिक्स पॉइंट फोर जीरो मीन दे हैव कंपेयर दिस ओके ठीक है चलो ठीक है द इंक्रीज एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ सेलिंग प्राइस दैट इज सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो एंड सिक्स पॉइंट फोर जीरो विल बी ट्रीटेड एज रिवर्सल ऑफ इंपीएमएल लॉस आई वी सीन दिस रिवर्सल रिलेट टू गुडविल इट कैन नॉट बी रिकोगनाइज अंडरस्टूड नाउ द एसेट ऑफ डिविजन नीड टू बी प्रेजेंटेड सेपरेटली फ्रॉम अदर एसेट इन द बैलेंस शीट बिकॉज नॉन करंट एसेट क्लासिफाइड एज हेल्प फॉर सेल नीड टू बी प्रेजेंटेड सेपरेटली करेक्ट अंडरस्टूड नाउ दे आई थिंक दे हैव गिवन अबाउट डेप्रिशिएशन द प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट शुड नॉट बी डेप्रिशिएटेड आफ्टर फर्स्ट जेन दिस इज आल्सो अंडरस्टूड द डिविजन विल बी रिगार्डेड एज अ डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन फॉर द ईयर एंड डेट 31 मार्च 2001 इट विल रिप्रेजेंट अ सेपरेट लाइन ऑफ बिजनेस एंड विल बी हेल्प फॉर सेल एट ईयर एंड so any component of entity which is now classified as held for sale will be also considered as what will be also considered as what this continued operation the statement of pl disclose a single amount a single amount the post tax profit or loss of division and the mpml loss arising for remeasurement division on classification as held for sale means it need to be presented separately in sopl as a profit or loss from this continued operation i hope you have understood the point so you can write down separately Correct now. If it is presented in statement of loss, it shall be presented in a section identified as relating to discontinued operation that is separately from continuing operation. Got it. So similar question we have done in class. I hope this point also is understood. Understood. Bolo. I hope you have understood. So with this we have completed all the RTP discussions. All the questions have been completed. I hope. whatever questions we have discussed there were some good question where attention were required there were some question which were new but it was simple question only and there were some question which were previously done miss previously given icu study material that was a copy paste of that question but overall you have understood what type of question have been given in rtp this time and what type of question for which question attention is required got it thank you very much for this rtp discussion all the best for your exam preparation what you can do that in the comment box in the comment box of this video you can just inform me what what you require from my side for this attempt means what i am saying that if you have any doubt about any concept if you have doubt about any question you just can write down in the comment box i will come with a video for that particular doubt for that particular concept whether it is a conceptual doubt whether it is a question doubt that for that i will come with an video till then bye bye take care enjoy remaining day All the best for your exam bye bye take care